Bearer, the third film uh, that we are going to see in the Tiger Award competition this year is a Spanish film, uh, Sister of Mine. It has a slightly different name in uh, Spanish, and you know it, by Pedro Aguilera. Mm. Please tell us mm. more. This is a hard-hitting film, I thought. This is a film that uh, makes you feel uncomfortable. This is a film that really dares to push the way we actually watch the way that we look at other people, the way that cinema looks at other people. And it's quite uncompromising in that way. It's kind of gut-wrenching. It's exciting also. Provocative, maybe? It's provocative. I mean, it's sex, siblings, and cinema. There's something very disturbing <laughs> in this film. Mm -hmm. uh, you always want things to happen because we're sort of programmed to look for a romantic ending and things. But actually, it leaves you... Um, questioning the own, your own way of watching people and watching and maybe even watching lustfully after other people and I think it's a very brave film mm -hmm. powerful and brave so definitely bringing uh, a broader look into the tigers something very different yeah but the, the nice thing which I think of what the tiger should represent is that they are always pushing the envelope, that they're mm -hmm. always trying something else, which is not always too pleasing. You have to be willing to undergo what's new. And I think this is exactly what this film does. It says, well, this is how I, as a filmmaker, look at film. This is how we watch other people. And when you watch a film where someone is watching someone else who knows is being watched, all kinds of messy things happen in your head. Thank you so much, sister of mine, Spanish, Spanish yeah. film. Good morning, Pedro. Pedro Aguilera. We are going to talk about the film Demonios Tus Ojos, if I'm yes. pronouncing it well. Yes. Uh, the English title is Sister of Mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you are not new to Rotterdam. Uh, I think I've read that you were here with your second film, and the pro or actually the project in the cinema. Yeah, it was in 2009 with my second film mm -hmm. when it was a project mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was great here yeah, in cinema. Yeah. I, I love so it. So how is it to be back and to be back and to be in competition with your film? Much better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, I always love Rotterdam as a festival. Mm -hmm. It has been always a reference of one of the best festivals. Mm -hmm. Some friends of mine have had their films here before mm -hmm. and when I came it was great. In Why I'm asking? Because you represent uh, actually Sorry. independent uh, cinema from Spain and so it must be to be back in Rotterdam, which is the right place. That was my... Uh, yes, yes, I think it's one of the best festivals in Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, they are very brave, very... Were you surprised by the invitation to competition? Did you expect it? No, you never expect that, because there's so much films going on mm -hmm. in the world, so it's it's, uh, yeah. it's a lottery sometimes, no? you, you never know we'll, of course, where yeah. your film will end, mm -hmm. the screening, no? but this is great, I mean, it's the first festival nice of the year, the first big, the first big festival, mm -hmm. and there's always really nice films in the selection, high quality, and we are honored and pleased. Okay, Pedro, so let's talk about your film. Um, when I uh, saw it for the first time, mm -hmm. I realized that you say a lot from at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. You are introducing your character, Oliver, who is a film director coming from LA. But we know him already. We see he's uh, quite nasty to his girlfriend. He is actually for the first time using his... Uh, Mobile, so he's using his view and um, and and screening a lady in the uh, in the train without asking her, so interrupting her privacy. And we see he's quite nasty also to the interviewer who is uh, 
asking him about his youth, that is important, and about his films. So my question is, uh, and then we are learning more and more, my question was, did you think about the profession of a filmmaker from the very beginning? Was this character film director from the very beginning? No, it was not. No. Uh, um, it take a lot of time to write the script, like mm -hmm. five years. Mm. The, the, the main process was like two years writing. But on the beginning I was writing with another screenwriter, mm -hmm. Spanish. And the, 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 the character Oliver was there and the title was there, but Oliver was not a cinema director and he was doing another thing. Mm -hmm. and, but there was the idea of um, manipulating mm -hmm. other people with the audiovisuals. Mm -hmm. So, and then that idea developed and finally we realized that the best, I mean, the perfect example of somebody that is manipulating others or pushing people to the limits mm -hmm. with the audiovisual is a film director. And as it is my work, also I knew it perfectly, so I, I can talk about it, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the character has something in common with me, but <laughs> not, so, not that much. Because you know? it's quite a critical view of a film director too. Critical but real. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know all the directors in the world, but mm -hmm. I have some friends, directors, and I know more or less that you always have to deal with reality. Mm -hmm. So you have to push reality to the limits to, for your own sake, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For, for, to get what you want from reality, from people. Mm -hmm. So when you have just one month to shoot a film or two months and uh, time is passing by and you need, you need the results, then you have to push people to the limits sometimes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. push the situations and, and that's what the, a director has to do sometimes. I mean, mm -hmm. not all the time, but sometimes you are forced to of course, push yeah. to the limits to the people. So this guy is used to do that, mm -hmm. not only with his films, but mm -hmm. with people that surround him, him. Mm -hmm. with, the, with the morals, he's pushing the morals all the mm -hmm. time. Uh, he's, mm, he likes to cheat with people, he likes to provoke people mm -hmm. to, in order to get something in reaction. Not only when he makes films, but only also in his private life. Yes. So that character started to grow mm -hmm. and then uh, was the beginning of the writing, more or less, mm -hmm. that character and that image. No? What about Aurora, the half-sister uh, of his? Um, there is a strange... Uh, she's a sort of innocent girl. Uh, which and her character also uh, evolves a lot. We can talk about it later. When did you think about this moment of uh, because it's a, a incestual uh, relationship? weren't you scared of it's quite a taboo or sensitive matter to touch? Well, for me, that is not the subject of the film. No? Mm -hmm. For me, the subject of the film is manipulation of and, course, and, uh, li and the limits of mm -hmm. morals and the limits mm -hmm. of things in, in the family. No? And the, the interesting point is that this guy is always pushing everybody to the limits, mm -hmm. pushing everything to the limits, but mm -hmm. finally he finds that the, the, the last limit he can not go through is his own family, mm -hmm. basically because it's his own identity. He, was, he had forgotten that because his father died and his mother died too. But it's okay with it. Uh, but uh, um, finally, he's pushing his sister to that point that he mm -hmm. recognized that is the last limit he can go through. Yes, they both talk about actually their childhood. He at the beginning of the train, and she, when the psychiatrist, or who is the man after everything happens, so the childhood was very important for both of them, creating them and cre creating the conflict. Well, the childhood is important for everyone. I mean, what you are is what you are in your childhood. No, I mean, the, she was she's saying she was developing a sort of um, jealousy for her big brother who mm. had the freedom that she couldn't reach. Yeah, he was, yeah, he admired him. He was older and more free than her, it looks like, but he was also frightened by him, you know, mm -hmm. it's the, the both, both things. When I create a character or when I develop a character, I never do it in a 
basic line. I mean, I try to understand that these people can do different mm -hmm. things with different meanings. I mean, the people, we are more complex. I mean, we can look like we are very nice one day and the mm -hmm. next day we can do very nasty things. Of course. You know? We have a, a light part yes. and a dark, dark part. No? Yes. So that's what happens to, to him and mm -hmm. to her in the film. Mm -hmm. We see both sides. So, so I was asking myself, uh, was it her admiration for a big brother or was it actually from both sides at a certain moment just a pure at sexual attraction that happens between them? Well, the important thing is that there is not a love story. I mean, they don't fall no. in love. And finally, um, yeah, there is a physical attraction, context. of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he will not be his brother, uh, she will felt attracted by him anyway. But the thing is that they didn't live together since she was mm -hmm, very a mm -hmm. child and they are from different mothers. So they don't know quite each other very much. So finally they are like strangers. Sometimes mm -hmm. you feel with your own family that is a stranger. I mean, I have, I have a big family. I have a lot of cousins I never meet. meet. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I, when I met them in just uh, meetings with the family, I don't know who they are. So you sometimes have family, very close family, and sometimes you have very uh, unknown family. Mm -hmm. So that's the question with, with them, no? Their link is the father, and she loves her father, and he hates his father. Oh. So finally, that's the difference between, uh, between them, mm -hmm. no? And he, in fact, I think he's trying to kill his father figure, and he's trying to kill his own identity by, by hurting her. Mm. But finally, she, he recognizes that that was not the purpose Good of thing. everything. I mean, he's suffering at, at the end of the film. Mm -hmm. Like, she's suffering too. I was going to ask you, the, she actually, as a character, seems to me quite innocent. As she, wants, she has plans to go to study and so. And for me, she lost her innocence twice. The first time when they have sex and, and she's totally uh, down mm -hmm. after realizing what she's done. And second time when she finds out that her best friend is actually having uh, some affair with uh, her own brother, whom she actually claimed after that. Uh, is it so? Is it yeah, well, there are, as he's pushing the limits all the time. He's trying to provoke things from people. Mm -hmm. um, there's different levels of, mm -hmm. of uh, she discovering his, her, her own brother. No? One is losing the fidelity and the other is losing loyalty. Mm -hmm. no, there are different levels. And for her, the most important is loyalty. I mean, uh, she's playing the game. He's, he's put in a game mm -hmm. with her, with uh, what's going on in the movie. And she says okay to that game, but finally um, the the loyalty is the more 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 most important thing for her. No? Mm -hmm. And this guy is not behaving properly with her in that sense. So yeah. that's why she broke with him. But in a way, in the end, you took everything from her when you are and let her watch this. Uh Film of uh, the, the the Italian filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holocaust, cannibal Holocaust. Yes, cannibal. Holocaust. Yeah, because she's, for me the more imp the most important. She's like Lolita eating this marshmallow, but her look is very empty. It's actually very yeah. Well, that's the strong. meaning of the title, no? Demonios mm -hmm. tus ojos. It's it means that be careful of what you see because mm -hmm. we are we are watching too much things nowadays. Mm. Everything is exposed, no? mm -hmm. so you can see everything. But finally, we don't know the meaning of this everything. I mean, mm -hmm. we are so used to see sex, mm -hmm. pornography or violence in the films or internet that finally the meaning of these images is getting mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. We are not uh, reacting to them so much because we are so used to them. Mm -hmm. it's not, we are not surprised. So this film is about this, about the saturation we have with images mm -hmm. and the sat we, we have seen too much. And in this case, he has seen too much about his sister. Mm -hmm. I mean, he shouldn't have seen that the images mm -hmm. about her. 
in the beginning of the movie. So finally, this is uh, provoking the whole film. Seeing too much is provoking mm -hmm. that the film is going on. And finally, for me, the main character of the film is, is her, because he's a grown-up guy, but mm -hmm. she's like 21. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's not that innocent that she looks like. I mean, she's mm -hmm. like a normal girl of studying course, in the yeah. university with her problems. But finally, he, he doesn't understand what's going on comparing the two girls, the two Auroras, the two sisters he's looking. Mm -hmm. The first one of the erotic video is mm -hmm. not the same that he's watching all the day with this uh, camera he's putting. No? Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that conflict with, between that two images mm -hmm. is what is revolting him to go further and further and pushing to, to the limits to her mm -hmm. because he wants to know more. Mm -hmm. And finally, what the, for me, what the movie means is that you will never know anything about somebody or about a subject when you are in the audiovisual because the audiovisual is a different thing than reality. Mm -hmm. We are mixing, we are confused. Mm -hmm. We think that a photo or a, a video is mm -hmm. the same as, a, as the person, as reality, and mm -hmm. we are confusing that. It's a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. So when you are watching somebody else in the internet, it's not the same person that you are meeting later, mm -hmm. even if it's, the, it's that person that is doing mm -hmm. that stuff. No? So um, in the end, the, the meaning of the, the last image with her watching that film is that he's losing not only her her innocence with the breaking this taboo mm -hmm. with the his his her her brother mm -hmm. but also is uh, breaking a taboo with the audiovisual she's, he's losing mm -hmm. his audiovisual mm -hmm. innocence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean now he's not surprised of watching that violent stuff mm -hmm. she's saturated mm -hmm. like he is mm -hmm. like we all are now we are saturated of audiovisual. We are saturated of images. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the meaning of, of them anymore. That's so very true. It's for the new generation of internet, huh? Yeah. They meet on the internet and then they don't know who they are actually meeting. In yeah, but not only mm -hmm. then the new generation. Everybody uh, that's has true. a confusion. I see. When you see uh, these magazines with famous people, mm -hmm. we think this. Famous people is that mm -hmm. photo, but he's not that guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can talk about them. Oh, Brad Pitt is doing that or what? I don't know why is why he <laughs> get divorced. I don't know. Mm. We don't know this guy. No, <laughs> he's a complete stranger. But we talk about him if we know him. Mm -hmm. So it's because we are watching him all the time. Mm -hmm. So we think the photo is his guy, but he's not this guy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us just shortly about the actors, because they're both excellent. Uh, Great, in the yeah. first place, I thought about Julio, that he was an uh, Englishman or American uh, speaking yeah, his he's English. He's both. He's both. He's, oh, he's half American, half Spanish. Also, is he uh, known or you discovered him or something? He's uh, he, a little known in Spain. He okay. has made several films, um, mm -hmm. but he's... He didn't have got the recognition yet that I think this film will get. You get for him. Yeah, I fantastic. think so. Yeah, I, I met him in my previous film. Mm -hmm. He made a, a secondary part there, but he, we get. Uh, we. What was it? Uh, we work so well together. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand so well each other. He's my close friend now, okay. and uh, I thought he deserved a film. You no, know? so from the first time I thought about him. For me it's amazing. I mean, he's, he's he has great. a lot of charisma. Mm -hmm. uh, also, he was perfect because he speaks perfect English. Mm -hmm. because half his, his, he was born in Washington, as oh, he okay. says in the film, mm -hmm. but his parents are Spanish. Okay. So he lived half of his life in the mm -hmm. States, but and now he's living in Spain. Okay. And she is more well known in Spain because she had, uh, you know, the Goyas, the awards. Mm -hmm. Like the Caesars in France, we have the Goyas in Spain, mm -hmm. and the youngest actress to win a Goya in Spain is, is Ivana. Oh, really? mm -hmm. Yeah, he was in a, uh, in a film called uh, Pan's Labyrinth mm -hmm. uh, by Guillermo del Toro, and um, he got a really recognition in that time, but he, he didn't work so much for a few years, now he's doing she, a, a... She? The Ivana, yes. Ivana, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she, she, she um, changed completely. Physically, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. Okay, Pedro, thank you so much for this conversation. Uh, thank you for coming to Rotterdam. We would like to wish you good luck in the competition and all the best thank with the much. premiere tonight. Thank, thank you, you very so much. Bye-bye.